Welcome to another episode of FIS. On today's edition, I am joined by Mr. Momodo E. Bin Jai, working under the Department of Water Resources. Now, he discusses about how poor sanitation and the climate change is affecting our natural water resources. But first, stay tuned for health and fashion. Men's dry hair treatment. You will be surprised to know not only women worry about their hair, but men do as well. Dry hair can be caused by a lot of things, such as shampooing too often in hot water, alcohol-based styling products, excessive blow drying, pool water, too much sun exposure, and extreme heat. Often, the fix can be something as simple as changing your routine if your hair is dry. Try these tips. Shampoo less in cooler water. For most guys, a daily shampoo isn't a problem. But if your hair is dry, you may want to try shampooing every other day. When you do shampoo, use lukewarm water. Use the right shampoo and conditioner. Finding a good moisturizing shampoo should be fairly easy. Look for a professional product labeled as moisturizing or for dry hair. Use the product each time you shampoo. Use the right styling product. When selecting a styling product, choose one without alcohol. Welcome back from Health and Fashion. Joining me now is Mr. Momoru E. Bin Jai from the Department of Water Resources. Mr. Njai, welcome to FIS. Tell us a little about what your job requires you to do. Thank you. I am Momoru B. Njai. I work for the Gambia Country Water Partnership. The Country Water Partnership is a neutral stakeholder platform consisting of national stakeholders in the water and water related resources. Well, precisely our role is to advocate for the implementation of the principles and practices of integrated water resource management at country level. Now, how accessible is um, clean drinking water to the Gambia right now? Okay. As of now, I can say the larger part of the population have access to clean drinking water, but it's not sustainable. Considering the practice in place, because it is prone to so many, so many threats. What type of threats? Like pollution climate change, uh, and so on. So with the... Um, Over uh, abstraction, mm -hmm. population growth, they are all threats to the availability of fresh water, especially drinking water. Now, would the decrease in rainfall be one of those? That is why I say climate change is a threat, because climate change determines a lot of things, including rainfall, sunshine, disasters like floods, droughts. Now, as far as the Gambia is concerned, we are endowed with three main water types of water resources, and among them one is rainfall. Rainfall pattern in these years is decreasing seriously because of climate change, global warming. Maybe you have been hearing about climate change. Like last year, there was no enough rain. So it remains a serious challenge and a threat to the availability of uh, rainfall or even the underground water because it is the rainfall that, that charges, recharges the underground water. Yeah. What are the other two natural resources? that? Uh, we have the surface water, we have the, the underground water. It is the surface water that is found in the rivers like for the Gambia, we have two uh, rivers. The River Gambia, that's the main river, part of the Atlantic Ocean, that is not a river. We share it with others. The River Gambia, too, we share it with other two, three countries. And you have the Alhen River, that is around Katong area. It's a small river. We share that with Kazamas. We call them transboundary waters. So this uh, surface water is also found in Greeks. Greeks, that's what we call locally in, as bolongs, bolongs, mm -hmm. or in ponds. So the other type of water resources we have is the underground water. 
the underground water we have two two uh, two levels you have two aquifers aquifers are the containers uh, the the what they call the water pools you have the top one and the down one the top one you can have from five meters to up to 70 meters but that one is confined within the gambia and it is semi-confined semi-confined in the nature that it is not everywhere that you can have them so you have the deep one the shallow uh, aquifer that one we share it with uh, senegal guinea bissau guinea conakry mali that is the down one that is why there is a saying that underground water and surface water have no, no respect for political boundaries. You could see that the, the underground water, the down one and the surface water travels all the way country to country. Back and forth. Fine. Now, so, well, let me ask you this. What are we doing about the pollution and sanitation issues that are bringing a threat to our clean water? Thank you. Taking this into consideration, let me start it at global level. Now, the world, through researches, have found out that there are a lot of threats of which our water resources are exposed to. Like I said, climate change is one, over abstraction is two, population growth, waste, and, uh, waste uh, is, is three, pollution also is a threat. So now, based on those statistics, the UN, in collaboration with other multilateral or bilateral institutions, have organized a series of forums, including the, so, uh, the, the famous Rio 92. I think you have been hearing about Rio 92. Mm -hmm. That's where the world converged to discuss on sustainable development, which cannot go without water. There cannot be any development, even life without water. So, followed by other series of forums, then the UN decided to establish, uh, facilitate the establishment of a global platform and that word platform is called the Global Water Partnership. Global, okay, the headquarters is in Sweden. So now that Global Water Partnership in collaboration with other bilateral institutions together with the UN, UN at its level also uh, established what they call UN Water. So those uh, collaborative efforts have yield, uh, resulted to encouraging governments to come up with a new system. See, that's what I want to know. What are these systems that are in place to make yeah. sure that yeah. we um, are no longer a threat? Yeah, that's why I, to the national level, I'm coming starting from the global, the root. So at global level, we have the UN and other play, uh, players like the Global Water Partnership. So they encourage regional partnerships to be established and they encourage national partnerships to be established. So ours is a national partnership. We are an affiliated member of the regional and the global. Now they encourage governments to come up with a system that will help in putting in the integrated water resource management process in their countries. So the Gambia, among others, have also developed what they call a roadmap. So this roadmap is what defines how we will go about What does the roadmap entail? Thank you. The roadmap first calls for a reform in the sector because previously all the, 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 the management of water and related resources is based on sectoral. Like you have the NAWEC, you have the PURA, you have the NEA, you have the water resources. And that fragmented nature has caused a lot of trouble all over the world. So that is why we, they are, the world is now calling for an integrated nature. So the roadmap calls for the establishment of a country water partnership. That is why we established one. So wait, as of now, there's no authority that is in charge of regulating our national um, water resources no, sector? No, frankly, no. Wow. Because the, the Department of Water Resources, by law, is not mandated to regulate. You cannot be a player and a referee at the same time. They cannot be providing services and regulating. We have PURA as a regulator, but PURA have limi uh, limited distance. They are only limited to the supply aspect of it, like the tariff and so on, but uh, customer uh, satisfaction. But they cannot say you have no right to dig a borehole here or a well here. Even the Department of Water Resources, they don't have it. 
Okay, the area councils are mandated by the local government act. But even with that, it, is, it has limitations. That is why there is a reform. There, was, there is a project going on. Very soon it will end because it is almost, their mandate is almost completed. That is the water sector, national water sector reform uh, project. So now that project has come up with uh, two bills, sorry, three bills. One will be the, the Gambia water bill. The other one will be Gambia, uh, sorry, national uh, water resources management authority bill and the national uh, Gambia meteorological uh, authority bill. So now that national uh, water resource management uh, authority uh, is going to be an authority because the system also requires for there are tools to be used. Mm -hmm. So one of them is institutional arrangements. This is why you have the these three institutions coming into place. So the National Water Resource Management Authority will be the uh, overall authority responsible for policy as far as the, the, the regulation of water and water-related resources are concerned in the country. So those bills have been prepared. Now they are waiting for enactment by the National Assembly. And if they are enacted, then it means the Department of Water Resources will split into two and their functions now will change. And now we will have a, an authority that will be responsible for regulating the management of our water resources in line with IWRM principles. How, how, how are we with uh, waste management? Fine. Waste is a problem. You know, with IWRM, we are saying that the definition of is, is that like is a process in which the, uh, the management, the development, the utilization of water and related resources will be coordinated. So now waste, most part of the waste is created through water. And we get even diseases, 60% of our disease, the diseases that we have is through water. So and through water, waste is a serious threat because both you have liquid waste, you have non-liquid waste, and you have industrial waste, you have agricultural waste, name them, you have domestic so waste. So what are we doing and who's in charge of regulating this and making sure that um, it is no more a problem? Fine. Every citizen, it is the responsibility of every citizen or everybody living within a country. Maybe but it, that hasn't been the case. So what do we do to actually force the, the citizens of each country to actually take it seriously? Fine. The National Environment Agency is mandated to help in the control of waste, but they also have their limitations. So now, through sensitization, advocacy, and so on, to, to make people aware of the dangers related to Are there waste. any current campaigns going on to make people aware? Yeah, but very limited, frankly. Because so. I haven't heard about it, that's why very I Very limited, yes. See, it, it is. It needs to be addressed yeah. better. Waste management is a problem. The municipal council also have a, uh, they have a, a, a part to play. The, the homes too, the people, especially women, I'm sorry to say, they create, so because they are responsible for most of the domestic work. That is why in the principles of IWRM, you have women have a crucial role. That is the second principle. They have a very crucial role in managing water. Most of our waste comes through water. Huh? So now, if women are the sole managers of water, frankly speaking, they are more prone to wastages than creating waste than men. And you go to the homes, they do the sweeping, they do the cooking. Huh? All those waste that will be generated from that. You understand? For the sanitation aspect, well, we are all equal because sanitation is there let's say toilet is for everybody but women need to be although men need to be but women rely on you what, as what's far your as what's your opinion on that would let's say what's your suggestion on how we, we should can do, we control, can make you control it fine like i said everybody have a stake in it so people should stop creating with minimize uh try and minimize the creation of waste in our offices, in our homes, everywhere. But here, people indiscriminately uh, throw waste, dump waste in the streets, everywhere. So it is the duty of the government, it is the duty of the National Environment Agency 
the councils, like the municipal councils and the area councils, ministries and departments, everybody should be involved and everybody should participate. If I have at the back of my mind that waste is creating problem to our resources, not only to uh, the water resources, you understand? Because water, without water, the food, food, there is no food. Don't think of it. Without water, there is no energy. Without water, there is no life. Good. So as far as waste is a threat to that, then it is obligatory on every one of us, frankly speaking, to contribute your part at your level. How can you involve? You start by yourself. We try to, uh, we try to increase the potential productive uh, potentials alongside trying to minimize the, the destructive potentials, like creating waste. One last question. Is there anything we can do to, with the um, decrease of rainfall? Yes. We can try and, okay, like I said, climate change determines the amount of rainfall we will have. So uh, activities, daily activities, contributes to green gas emission. Like what? Yes, like the heat we, 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 we produce every day, the mm -hmm. heat, the destruction of the forest, you understand? Trees, in every aspect, scientifically, religiously, trees are related with water, especially rainwater. So the destruction of trees causes the decrease. One is one of the causes of uh, low rainfall. Two, the, the heat that we produce through electricity, through fire, and so on, also contributes to green gas emission. Now, those trees, they're like the mangrove trees, maybe you, don't, uh, you may know about mangroves, they are found normally around the riverside. Mm -hmm. Those mangrove trees, they, they absorb a large quantity of uh, carbon. You understand? So but let's say in a situation where we don't have them, it means that we have anything that comes, comes in extreme. Hmm? The ozone layer is destroyed because of the, 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 the heat. And the ozone layer also helps in absorbing a large quantity of carbon so that we are free from other destructive aspects. So now everybody should try as much as possible to try to reduce the amount of energy that you create. Hmm? You don't light, put light on unnecessarily. So basically just put yeah, it on if you yeah. need to switch it off you only, when you're Yeah, you only need And perhaps it, we can it. also grow more trees. Good. And, and try to preserve the trees. Because even the principle is saying that we should, the IWRM, uh, sorry, uh, definition is telling you that we, uh, we maximize, uh, we maximize the, 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 the utilization of the resources. You understand? So as to get the economic and social resultants without compromising the environment and the ecosystem. Maybe as a layman you may feel that the ecosystem that is, the, 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 is not important as far as our life is concerned. But it's directly connected with water. All these things are connected. Without the ecosystem, there is no fish in the, in the river. There is, the amphibians down there will all die. You understand? So we don't have fish on our plate. Without food, without uh, water, we cannot have, uh, uh, we cannot breed animals. So there is no meat on the, on the plate, there is no rice on, on, on the table. So you see, they are all interlinked. So everybody, you have to put, have this at the back of your mind that let me try and reduce mm, the waste that I'm creating for the destruction of our resources, including water. Thank you very much, Mr. Njai, for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, too. Joseph Dave Gomez, the first Gambian to play for Liverpool. Born in May 23, 1997, from a Gambian father to an English mother. Joseph Dave Gomez graduated through the academy nearby Carlton Adlet, making his way in the team's on the 18th side, at just 13 years old. His senior debut came in a 4-0 League Cup victory over Colchester United at the Valley 
on the 12th August 2014, playing the full 90 minutes as the right back. He began his career at Carlton Athletic before he was sold to Liverpool for a fee of £3.5 million in June 2015. Gomez has represented England up to under-17 level and played every minute of every game when England won the 2014 UEFA European League on the 17th Championship. That's all we got for you on Lubez this week. See you next week. I am Mariam Jara. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Now, I think it is very important that we take care of our environment and to limit or actually not pollute at all, be it liquid or solid, because it is us that live in this country or this planet in general, and thus we will have to suffer the consequences. But see you soon on FIS next week, same place, same time.